How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to bring you guys my first official draft for the upcoming 2022 slash 2023 FPL season. So the reason I've added official draft in there is because I actually did release a first draft a couple of weeks ago when the fixtures were released. But don't worry guys, this draft is going to be quite different to that one. Now that we've got the context of the FPL prices, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about them. In my personal opinion, I'm quite excited because there's so many cheap options that we can potentially look at. Now, if this is your first video of the Davy FPL channel. I do welcome you if you guys are returning. Welcome back. Hopefully, this season we can push on to another top 10k finish after three in the last four seasons. Now, there's going to be a load of content coming up this preseason, so make sure you guys are subscribed and hit that bell notification so that you don't miss any of my videos coming up. But get hyped if you guys aren't already because this is only the start of a couple of exciting weeks heading up to that Game Week 1 deadline where we will be doing a massive deadline stream. But let's get back to this video so without further ado, sit back, relax and let's get straight into it. So before we get on to the actual draft, there's a couple of admin things that I wanted to sort out. The first thing is a little bit of an exciting announcement. I've finally launched a Discord channel, and this is going to be a channel for my entire community. Why I'm saying that is that I know that some people have kind of paid Discords. This is going to be a combination of both of them. There's obviously going to be some free elements such as Q&As. Uh, just think of almost like a Twitter space where I kind of join a channel. You guys can ask me questions, maybe a one question go sort of thing. But then obviously also have the membership channels, which will be kind of an incentive to become a member of this YouTube channel. So right now we do have the supporters and the legends. There's going to be kind of places, a voice channels, chat channels for both of those two distinctions. And what that membership will get you is a kind of one-on-one -on -one sessions where we talk about your own team on a more personal level. Maybe you guys give me some insights. Maybe I can give you some opinions on what I think you can do with your own team. And then obviously my team reveals will also be on those channels. So the link is going to be the first one in the description. Join it if you guys want to wait a few weeks, maybe gather the hype for the upcoming game week one, let it simmer a bit, 100%. But I'm excited about the new season, so if you guys are as well, you can join me and we can discuss FPL over on Discord. If you guys have any feedback on the server, you can also drop that in my DMs on Twitter or just message me on the Discord or on YouTube, as I am always looking for ways to improve the Discord server. The next talking point is about the FPL prices. Now, I know, guys, I've not really reacted to these FPL prices. And the reason for that is that if you guys have watched my channel, especially last season, I released a video. I think I titled it FPL made these pricing mistakes. I'm going to release a version of that video for this upcoming FPL season, a better version. I've kind of improved it. Saw what you guys said in the comments down below, and I've improved on some talking points. And I'm pretty sure that video is going to be an absolute banger. So if you guys have not turned on that YouTube bell notification, make sure that you do because you don't want to miss this video. As I mentioned, I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite a good one. So that's why I've actually saved my FPL price reactions in this draft. Obviously, I'm going to be giving you guys some initial reactions, but that video is going to cover quite a deep dive into which players are worth it and which players are hidden gems or overpriced. But now let's get on to this actual video and as I always say the fixtures for any draft are the bread and the butter. Now if you guys have watched my first draft video that I dropped a couple of weeks ago when these fixtures were announced you guys can kind of just skip ahead as I'm going to be going through these fixtures very quickly. I'm going to be giving you guys my top six teams over the opening six game weeks. Now why the opening six game weeks? I just find this is a nice metric to kind of cover. You guys can go with whatever you want maybe opening 15. I just think the opening six is quite a reasonable rate as it's not too far into the future and it's not too short term. Now my top six teams might be different to yours. I've looked at kind of some ratings of defensive and attacking form. I've looked at the difference in the home and the away teams. But if you guys have a differing opinion, maybe your fixture ticker is a little bit different to mine. Drop it in the comments down below. Let's get a discussion going. You probably will recommend someone like a Spurs that I've not covered. But as with anything in FPL, there's different opinions. But the first team is going to be kind of a joint opinion here. I think you guys have also picked up on this. It's going to be Liverpool, probably the most favorable team to triple up on with those lovely cheap FPL prices this season. Now, Liverpool have the perfect combination, great options, great fixtures. That's going to lead to an absolute FPL masterclass of points. It's just going to kind of depend on which three Liverpool options you guys do go for. Now, the next team is a little bit of a no-brainer as well. It's Man City. So, Liverpool, Man City. Man City winning the Prem last season. Liverpool coming second. Definitely the two best teams in the Prem at the moment. And that's why getting as many City and Liverpool options as possible is going to be the strat to go for, in my opinion. So, like Liverpool, Man City have some great opening six fixtures. Have a couple newly promoted sides in there that I think are going to be quite high-scoring affairs. Also, defensively, they're great. And there's a couple of options in that team that I do like the price of. 
Next up is going to be Arsenal, and they have some nicely priced options. However, I think because the options are so cheap this season, they might have made Arsenal options a little bit too underpriced, except for maybe a Saku who I think comes in right at 8 million. But Arsenal also have some great fixtures coming up, and depending on how they're looking in pre-season, a couple of Arteta's players might find their way into my Game Week 1 team selection. Next up, Chelsea, a team that also have come underpriced in my opinion. Some great fixtures coming up here. A little bit annoying that they are facing Spurs in game week two. Then also West Ham in game week six. But I think in between that, some really nice fixtures to go for. It's going to kind of depend on how that Chelsea team sets up. Now the last two teams are a little bit more budget friendly. We've got Wolves here, a team that had a pretty bad last season. So I'm just hoping that they can kind of rejuvenate over this preseason and show some good form heading into game week one. As then there'll definitely be a couple of options because they are so cheap. Next up is going to be Brentford, a team that I really like. I like their approach of using a lot of data when they do analyze fixtures and that sort of thing. So a couple of their options might be in my team, especially in that forward line. Now, obviously, these are only six teams and you guys probably have some others. So maybe some favorites like United or Spurs that you want to go for 100%. I'm just kind of giving you guys a basis to run off and then you can kind of adjust the template however you do, please. But now that we've gone over the fixtures, as I always say, the bread and butter of any draft, I'm going to be showing you guys how I came up with this draft, which is going to be my first official one since the app has released. Now, hopefully you guys are enjoying these new graphics or these new images on screen. Let me know what you guys think of them down below. And if you have any feedback for me, don't be shy. Now, as I always go over, whenever I talk about a draft or a team, I'm going to talk about the bench first, and especially in this case, because literally the bench is absolutely shocking. The bench is so bad that I've not even highlighted any players. I've simply called them their position and their price point. So in any game week one draft, I always have a 4.0 goalkeeper. Unfortunately, this season, I don't think we'll have any playing goalkeepers, but a sub or a third sub is perfectly fine for me at that price point. Next up, it's going to be a 4.5 midfielder, and this player will probably be the one I rely on if any of my starting 11 get injured or miss out completely to come off my bench and hopefully get me at least two points. Then the last two options on the bench are going to be two 4.5 forwards. Now, you guys might be kind of analyzing my bench and predicting my starting 11. So yes, I only have one forward, and you probably have guessed who it's going to be, but there might be some surprises coming up. Now, obviously, this bench is pretty bad, as I mentioned, and there might be some concerns here if one of my starting 11 options does miss out. But because of the five subs this Premier League season, I'm expecting most of my options, or at least the more expensive options, to at least come off the bench if they don't start the fixture. But we can adjust this up until that game week one deadline. Maybe we feel more comfortable with switching the formation around, having a 4.5 defend on the bench. There are a couple of reliable options there. So if push comes to shove and we need some bench coverage, that's probably what I'll do. But now let's go over our actual starting 11, and this is where all the magic's going to happen. The bench is cheap, but the starting 11 is definitely not, even though the FPL prices this season are a little bit underpriced. Coming in in our goalkeeper position, it's going to be the 4.5 Raya from Brentford. Mentioned those lovely Brentford fixtures, and Raya's points per game when he did feature and wasn't injured last season were really respectable. Now, I actually really do like what FPL has done with goalkeepers this season, kind of underpriced them. Allison comes in at 5.5. We have some other options like a Mendy from Chelsea at 5.0. So if you guys do have some extra cash to splash, I would maybe upgrade him to one of those options. However, at 4.5, I don't think you can go wrong with any of these assets. It's going to kind of be which 4.5 to go for. And I might actually end up swapping Raya out for one of his other goalkeeping colleagues. But now let's go into a more premium side of things. Let's go and talk about a team that I highlighted first in the fixtures. I'm going to talk about Liverpool. So in terms of the no-brainers here, I believe that Trent and Salah are the no-brainers from Liverpool. You guys might argue that you want to go for Robertson over Trent. Robo kind of finished last season in a better position than Trent, getting kind of more points per game. But I just believe that Trent Alexander-Arnold is the best defender to own in FPL. Same goes for Mo Salah, the most reliable option over these prior seasons, a no-brainer captaincy in most fixtures, and Liverpool are definitely one of those fixture-proof teams. But now we're going to come on to our first dilemma or our first debate, and it's going to be which option should we bring in to complete our Liverpool triple-up. So if you guys have analyzed the options, I've come down to two assets, and you probably have the same debate as me. It's going to be Luis Diaz versus Andy Robertson. So Robert comes in at 7.0 million, a fairly respectable price, a little bit underpriced in my opinion. Thought that trend would come in at 8.0 and a Robert at 7.5, but I'll take 7.0 because it means I can afford him uh, easily. And then Luis Diaz comes in at 8.0 million, which I also believe is a little bit underpriced. So what do you do if you have two underpriced options to compare? Well, it kind of cancels each other out. So let's just go for points potential. So in terms of Robertson, I think he should be now to start at that to fullback position for most games for Liverpool, whereas Luis Diaz might see some rotation. And if he does start, he might get subbed early with these new five subs. Right now, what I think Liverpool will set up with is it's either going to be Jota or Darwin Nunes, or maybe even a Firmino up front. But then we could also see Jota on the left and he could kind of rotate with Diaz. 
Salah on the right will be where he stays. I think he's the most nailed option in that Liverpool side. So I'm just telling you that there might be some rotation here and there for Luis Diaz. So taking that into account, I kind of reached the conclusion that I will be going for Andy Robertson as my third Liverpool option. But if you guys do want to go for Luis Diaz, I can perfectly understand it. And the reason for that is that there's so many defensive options. So you might want to go for a cheaper option like a Reese James or Chowell at that defender slot. So now we've spoken about our Liverpool assets, let's go over our Man City ones as they definitely are the best team in the Premier this season and they've signed more players so theoretically they should be getting better. So in terms of the no-brainers here, it's going to be Haaland and Cancelo from Man City. So we have a defender and the main attacker that should be starting most games in Haaland. So quite a nice price here for Cancelo at 7.0 and Haaland comes in 0.5 cheaper than I thought he would and that's going to be 0.5 cheaper than De Bruyne. Now between De Bruyne and Haaland, it's simply kind of a 50-50 in my opinion. I just really back Haaland to kick off this season quite well, and that's why I've gone for the forward. But like Liverpool, I would like to triple up on Man City, and that's why I've gone for another option from them, but who is it going to be? Now we'll be selecting a Man City midfielder to kind of compete in that midfield slot. Now there are a couple of options to actually look at. We have Grealish that comes in quite cheap at 7.0. We have Mahrez and Foden at 8.0. It's just going to kind of depend on who starts the most games. But predicting Pep is an absolute disaster class and that's I'm going to go for the more safe option of Phil Foden. Now I just personally like Phil Foden, I think he's a quality football player and I think at the start of this Premier League season you have to play him as he's one of the best young players in the world at the current moment. But obviously through preseason we might see some changes, maybe Morris is more nailed if Sterling leaves to Chelsea, that could also be a consideration. But I just think right now at 8.0 million, Phil Foden's the man to go for. Now we're going to show some love to some other teams here. We only have one player from Chelsea and it's going to be Ben Chilwell in that defensive department. Now between Ben Chilwell, Reese James, both came in at the exact same price point, which I think was quite clever from FPL. But I just think that Ben Chilwell is favored in my opinion, because when he did start last season, he got hauls basically every game. But as I said, between Reese James and Chilwell, 50-50 there, just go for whatever you want. I've just gone for Chilwell in this draft. Now the one thing I want to tell you guys about is that apparently Chelsea are trialing different formations in their training program and a lot of people have actually been saying that they might play a four at the back in this Premier League season. Now a four at the back, although Liverpool have some nice attacking fullbacks, I do believe if Chelsea go with the four at the back, it's going to restrict Chill and Reese James from an attacking point of view and that might be a little bit of a dampener on them. So that's why currently I've only gone for one Chelsea asset because I want to be a little bit more conservative and just see how they set up in the Premier season. Now going on to another team in London, I've gone for two players from Arsenal. It's going to be Tomoyasu at 4.5 and Saka at 8.0. Now Tomoyasu is a simple no-brainer for me. If he's going to start most games for Arsenal, I really do like him at that price point. But saying that, there's a whole bunch of 4.5 assets that you guys can look at. Saka on the other hand comes in more expensive at 8.0, but I just think he's worth it if he's going to be nailed in that starting 11. Now will he be on penalties? Who kind of knows with Gabriel Jesus in the starting 11 for most games for Arsenal having signed for them. And then you also have Rafinha in the wings who usually plays right wing but I think that he will go to Barca. But yes with those Arsenal lovely fixtures I'm going for Saka over someone like a Martinelli who comes in cheaper but there might be more of a rotation concern there with someone like a Smith Rowe. And the final player in our starting 11 is going to be quite a cheap option at 5.5 coming in at about 5.0 less than was predicted. It's going to be Pedro Neto from Wolves. So we've mentioned Wolves' fixtures are looking quite strong. Yes, they don't have a great season. Neto didn't have a great season last season with all those injuries. I was hoping throughout this preseason we see his recovery from that injury and he heads into game week one on absolute fire. Leeds in game week one is an absolute gift and I do believe if Wolves look stronger in preseason I'll definitely go for Neto but there are a couple of nice 5.5 options that you guys can also look at. So overall guys this is going to be the template kind of team that I have set up. There are some other big at the back formations that I will be covering throughout the upcoming weeks. I'll be covering a lot of drafts, some alternatives, some more premiums in these sides. Maybe fitting in Salah, Haaland and Son into one draft. Absolute madness there but I'll try and do it. But if you guys also have any suggestions of drafts that you want to see drop them in the comments down below. But now that we've spoken about this template, I want to show you guys some variations or at least one or two changes that I could potentially make. So let's just say I don't really favor that Man City game against West Ham away in game week one. Or maybe I'm a little bit concerned about that Man City lineup. Maybe Foden or Haaland gets rotated. Or maybe we don't think they'll start game week one. Well then there's two assets that I have potentially been looking at and they're going to be from Spurs. And obviously those two assets are going to be Harry Kane and Kulisevsky that come in at the exact same price points as Haaland and then also Foden. Now while Kulisevsky's price might be on the more expensive side of things with Richarlison in that starting 11, who kind of knows what Kulisevsky's going to do, but he's a quality option and I think I'll definitely have the ginger sweet at least once this Premier League season. Then we obviously have Harry Kane that could come in for Haaland or at least we start with him in game week one and then switch to Haaland at a later stage this season. I just think it's quite enticing when Spurs play Southampton in game week one. 
Now, obviously, this is kind of a locking in transfers for the upcoming game weeks, which usually is not what you want to do. But with so many teams looking similar, I want to kind of get whatever edge up I can in game week one. Let me know what you guys think about this move down in the comments below. Are there any people that agree with me that maybe going for a Kulisevsky or a Kane over Haaland or maybe even a Foden might be the play to go for with a lovely Southampton at home game in game week one. But otherwise, this is basically wrap up the video, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you're new. You haven't subscribed yet. As I mentioned, put those bell notifications on or subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any of the videos coming up this FPL preseason. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in the Discord channel as well, but I'm going to be signing off. It's me, Davey FPL, and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.